and as the Vice Chancellor of Dubrugar University, Assam, for full terms of five years, each in both the positions. Professor Buragrahai had made remarkable contribution in forging industry academia interfacing and in bringing in international academic research collaboration at Dibrigar University under the UK IERI, Indo-US and Indo-Tunisian research schemes. He was awarded for his remarkable contribution towards exemplary industry academia partnership by Worldwide Industry Academia Network. Professor Buragahan also has many other uh, administrative experiences. He has held many posts of responsibilities and he was also the chairperson and member in many committees, boards of studies of central universities of the Northeast and the UGC. His academic governance also a uh, very long since and he has there is nothing i think there is no field in which he has not left his mark and we are very very fortunate to have him here today and he also has a number of publications his research work books written books chapters to his credit and we uh, would like to hear from him today as i look forward that he will connect today's theme which is the future of science, technology, and innovation impact in education schemes and um, work. And we would like to see or hear from him in the light of the national education policy, how it takes forward. Uh, over to you, sir. Everyone is eagerly waiting <coughs> to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Tulika Bey, for your very inflated introduction. Uh, I'm, I'm, indeed, I'm indeed privileged to be with you uh, all uh, this afternoon on this very important day of National Science Day, uh, which we are observing uh, throughout the country. <coughs> uh, I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Bidadhar Bhatt Thakur, uh, the Regional Director of the Northeastern Regional Institute of Education, uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, to address you and especially the young students on this occasion. <clears throat> uh, now, you know, to give a brief uh, background uh, after what you have said, that yes, Government of India from uh, 1987 uh, started celebrating this day, 28th of February, as the National Science Day uh, to commemorate, as you say again, uh, the great uh, invent a great discovery uh, of uh, one of the celebrated uh, Indian scientists, physicist, um, uh, Dr. C. V. Raman, Sir C. V. Raman. It was on this day he actually formally announced uh, his, uh, um, this um, um, unique uh, discovery in science, which we know as the scattering of um, uh, light, um, and uh, the effect is known as the Raman effect. Uh, we will not discuss about the uh, discovery of Raman, but then we will try to understand why, uh, I mean, why this day is celebrated um, in his memory, um, because it is not only just because he won the Nobel Prize for this work in 1930. Uh, it was almost now 93, 94 years, um, you know, um, since uh, uh, Sasivi Raman had made his epoch-making um, discovery in physics. Uh, now, the, the very idea of uh, observing or dedicating a day in the year for uh, celebrating science is not only really limited to India. Let me tell you at the beginning. Uh, it is not only in India that we celebrate February 28 every year since 1987 as the National Science Day. There are many countries in the world, including advanced countries in the world, uh, where a day in the calendar uh, is uh, dedicated for celebrating science as the countries, those respective countries, National Science Day. Even the United Nations, under the aegis of the UNESCO, uh, also uh, celebrates the uh, International Science Day for Peace and Development. So something is very special about science. That is the reason. Now, now we have to understand, uh, generally, when we talk about science, generally what comes to our mind is that science is nothing but physics, chemistry, mathematics, and all those things. But it is not that. Science is more than that. Uh, and, uh, uh, and that is the reason uh, we are celebrating uh, National Science Day, taking Sir C. V. Raman's 
discovery, which is Nobel Prize winning discovery. Uh, no doubt it is so very important and significant. But what is more significant, two things. I would like to uh, draw the attention of the young students about the, uh, about the significance of this invention. One, I would um, discuss in detail, elaborately. And the other one, I will just mention briefly. And finally, I will also try to relate uh, with this year's team, uh, the future of uh, STI, STI, that is Science, Technology, Innovation, uh, and its impact in education, work, and skill. That is, the, that is the second part. And as you mentioned, briefly, I will try to also relate to the new national education policy, which is, uh, which is much discussed these, these days. And we will try to relate and see how we can uh, find a meaning uh, of uh, celebrating science uh, in the context of uh, the theme and also in the context of the national new education policy. So these are the brief you know, aspects that I intend to highlight and discuss with you. I don't have any structured lecture. I will just speak on. And uh, um, at the end of the speech, if you have any query, we can have, the, have a very brief discussion on that. Now, <clears throat> the two things, um, the significance of uh, Sir C.V. Raman's discovery are two. One, Sir C.V. Raman, uh, he, he had never been to a country outside India for his research. Whatever he did, he did everything on Indian soil. And he never used very sophisticated, very um, um, you know, uh, expensive equipment for his work. He continuously worked in an organization in Calcutta, uh, now Kolkata, uh, and that is the famous institute called the Indian Society for Cultivation of Science. This is a very renowned institute. Uh, after his MSc in 1907 from Madras University, he straight went there and he joined uh, his research in the Indian Society for Cultivation of Science. And uh, his brilliance, his academic excellence, his brilliance was well known everywhere then. And uh, the then Vice Chancellor of uh, the University of Calcutta, um, Asutos Mukherjee, Sir Asutos Mukherjee, he himself was a very great scholar of repute uh, and a very wise man. And he appointed, he invited Sir C. V. Raman also to join the physics department in the University of Calcutta. And he was doing teaching in University of Kolkata, uh, Calcutta, and simultaneously he also continued his research in the Indian uh, Society for Cultivation of Science in um, uh, Calcutta. So, and it is in that institute, using very simple tools and equipment, uh, he could really um, um, manage to discover some of the, uh, one of the, the finest dis discoveries in physics, the Raman effect. So, what this um, um, discovery uh, signifies is the fact that great science is possible. Please take note, my dear student friends, great science, science is possible in India and it doesn't require sophisticated equipment, expensive equipment uh, as the primary uh, requirement for scientific discovery and invention. You have to remember this. You don't have to go abroad always uh, to do big, great discoveries. You don't need, uh, you may need, you will need sophisticated equipment, expensive equipment, but then more than that, what is required is your mind. What is important is your spirit of inquiry. So that is more important, your ability to think. Uh, and uh, th this is what is signified by uh, Sir C. V. Raman's uh, great discovery of Raman effect. Uh, what is more important to my mind and what is of greater significance to my mind more than his uh, Nobel Prize winning um, discovery of Raman effect is his spirit of inquiry, his capacity to go for deep thinking and analyze things and uh, uh, observe, um, analyze what he had observed uh, and finally arrive at the truth. And that is the beauty of science. So it is, please always remember that your mind is more important than anything else. And that is why pe people, people talk about uh, creativity um, uh, in the mind or creative thinking, um, um, uh, innovative thinking, um, imaginative thinking. These are all very important um, in the pursuit of science. The second part, the second significance. So first significance is very simple, as I have told you, that in India itself, 
it is possible to make world class uh, world class scientific discoveries you don't have to go anywhere and for that what is required is your mind your capacity to think deep learning and uh, uh, your own scholarship so this is this is one uh, lesson that we can learn and that is why every year we remember uh, raman's um, discovery and remind us that we too can do it you too can do it uh, being in india that is something great the second part is uh, as i said the second part of the uh, uh, second part of the uh, significance of this day celebration is the spirit of inquiry that is one needs to have a scientific temper scientific temperament or scientific temper you have to be rational you have to be you have to you have, you have to you, you must appreciate what is logic what is reason and so on and so forth so that you are not random you are not random you are logical you always reason right from the wrong wrong and uh, and that is the driving force um, uh, in the pursuit of science this capacity the spirit of inquiry is very important it is not that it is only the scientists who who should be reason who, who who should have this capacity to reason and go for logic no every one of us every one of us every individual on this country uh, on this planet uh, in this country especially uh, have the ability to think and on uh, the only point is that one has to have this ability to think reasonably rationally to be uh, you know um, extended to uh, your whole personality your conduct your behavior your attitude and everything this is very important every citizen every 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 citizen of the country whether you are pursuing science or you are pursuing any other um, uh, subjects in your profession you are required to be uh, you are required to have a spirit of inquiry you are required to have rational um, uh, a scientific temperament um, has to guide you all along so this is the second significance this is the most important significance and you, you please remember uh, you please remember india is the only country perhaps in the world india is the only country perhaps in the world which has a constitution which states that if, if you look at the if i if i may draw your attention to article 51 a h of the indian constitution of the indian constitution article 51 a h uh, which uh, which describes the fundamental du fundamental duties of the uh, citizen of india so it, uh, it it says that this section says that article 51 that every indian citizen will have a fundamental duty to develop scientific temper humanism and will develop a spirit of inquiry and reform this is a profound this is a profound statement in the constitution of india this is the only constitution in the india perhaps where it uh, it, it 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 stipulates that one of the fundamental duties of each and every citizen of india must have as a fundamental duty to develop scientific temper this is something outstanding this is something very profound no other country has this um, uh, you know stipulated embodied in their uh, constitution so we are supposed to be uh, having a rational mindset a scientific temper uh, we, we must also develop a spirit, a spirit of inquiry and we must be ready for it with an open mind for reform for change and i will follow now and with with this respect i will again relate uh, to what the new national education policy says right so these are these are two very important significance of celebrating national science day we are not celebrating raman effect we are not celebrating cv raman just like that we are celebrating the spirit of inquiry the importance of the scientific temper in a country um, uh, which has an ancient knowledge system which is a, which has a tremendous civilizational um, um, strength um, uh, that is india um, in its uh, in its ancient knowledge and wisdom uh, which all which is replete with um, mind-boggling inventions and discoveries um, not today not in the last 200 years or 100 years but thousands and thousands of years ago when the entire world was you know dark in the 
uh, and was, was dark, uh, was immersed in the darkness of, um, uh, what should I say, kind of a barbaric life, uncivilized. The light of civilization has not dawned anywhere in the world except in India. Um, uh, and when, thousands of years ago, the Indian scholars, the Indian gurus, rishis, and they have uh, had the capacity of this deep thinking, deep probing of the nature and the universe. And they have, um, uh, they have without instrumentation, uh, most of the times, without, with their capacity to think very, very deeply, they could, they could, they could discover things like um, zero. The concept of zero um, by Arjavatta was in India only. That was thousands of years ago. The decimal system came in India only. That was again thousands of years ago. The concept of uh, atom, don't think that it was only a, a hundred, 200 years ago by John Dalton, uh, who propounded first um, the at theory of uh, atoms, atomic theory of Dalton. It is not, an, it is not for the first time that um, uh, somebody said uh, uh, about the ultimate structure of matter in the form of atoms and molecules. It was thousands and thousands of years ago, the Indian uh, Rishi, um, the scholar, uh, Kannad, he said about the concept of Anu and Paramanu, that is atoms and molecules. So that was many, many years ago. So we have tremendous civilizational strength uh, in India. Uh, our knowledge system is so ancient and so strong. It is so, so it was, it is so strong that we, we, we had knowledge about all these many, many years ago about medicines, about surgery, Ayurveda, plastic surgery, uh, and all those things. India, in every field, whether it is physics, whether it is biology, whether it is chemistry, whether it is metallurgy, uh, in every sphere of science and engineering, uh, ancient Indians had tremendous contribution to the world. So we must not forget this. We must not forget our tremendous civilizational strength in knowledge, in contribution. So this is another significance to recall, as exemplified by the brilliant work of Sir C. V. Raman in 1920, uh, 1928. But then even thousands of years ago, we had the tradition of uh, contributing to big knowledge uh, by deep thinking. Uh, uh, and therefore, uh, I keep saying that it is the mind that is most important than anything el else. People often say that we do not have infrastructure. People often say that we do not have the sophisticated machines and tools um, um, to, to, to carry forward our research. But then to my mind, the man behind, and also for that matter, the woman behind the machine is more important than the machine. The man or the woman behind the machine is more important than the machine. And when I say man and woman, I talk about the human mind. It is the human mind behind the machine which is more important. The most powerful machine in the world is the human mind. The most important and most powerful machine in the uh, world is the human mind. So therefore, uh, on this day, while celebrating the National Science Day, we have to uh, look at ourselves, think about our own capacity. We have to do introspection that uh, we must use our faculty of uh, thought uh, in a befitting manner so that we can really get the um, we, we can really harness the uh, full potential of what God has endowed us with and has exemplified by uh, ancient history and even modern history uh, because Sivir Raman is almost history now. So therefore, it is very important that we have to inculcate uh, uh, the, uh, the practice of thinking. Uh, the problem in, in the world today is that our young people do not think. Please remember, that not only young people, even 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 um, uh, even elderly people, we do not think. We do not think because uh, we are half the time, most of the times, we are driven by, we are conducted by somebody else's thought process. Somebody else's thought process. Something that we read in the book. Some scholars have done it and say that that this is this is what it is, and we accept it. But then beyond that also, there is a scope that we also think, we also look at the world through our own eyes because we can also see through our own eyes, the world, the universe, the different phenomena, the different objects. And we can also see through our own eyes, through our own lens and have our own analysis of the event of the object and come up with some kind of um, unique um, um, observations and understanding. So this is not done. 
we limit our thought process to somebody else's thought process and that is dangerous and that is bad. So in that, um, uh, what happens is that our full capacity of the our faculty of thought remains uh, unutilized. And therefore, you know, just like Sivirman had really uh, been able to uh, make this epoch-making discovery of the Raman effect, which won him the Nobel Prize way back in 1930, um, uh, only points out at the fact that you too can think, you too can look at the sky and wonder why it is blue, the way he wondered, and that led to the discovery of the Raman effect. You have to see the world through your own eyes, anything and everything. Look at it. Try to understand it through your understanding. Try to get it, take your understanding, uh, relate to what is being explained in the books. Elderly people, the seniors who who, who teach you, and try to uh, try to uh, try to rationalize uh, your observation, your understanding with what is being told. And if you find something new, something interesting, you must not inhibit to discuss and debate. And this is how. Uh, the progression of knowledge takes place and with progression of knowledge human civilization progresses so it is the thought process that is very very important and the thought process cannot be random it has to be rational it has to be based on logic and reason and that is what is called as the scientific spirit the scientific temper and which is required not only for progression of knowledge but this is also required for very smooth peaceful conduct of our daily life and if, if each and every one of us as a national citizen with scientific temper uh, we you know we we conduct ourselves in a reasonable manner in a manner which is based on reason then uh, the whole nation develops the whole country progresses and with us the whole world will progress so uh, to develop scientific temper is very very important and it is so important that when the country won the independence from the British. So our forefathers, they have very correctly, very rightly thought that uh, every citizen must have a fundamental duty to uh, develop scientific temper. So this is something outstanding and because it is, it, it has to be outstanding because if you want to make your country outstanding, you each and every citizen has to be outstanding and you can become outstanding uh, only when you are conduct, you conduct yourself with a spirit of inquiry with rationality uh, with a scientific temperament and this this does not require a science degree to develop scientific temperament to develop scientific temper one doesn't have to have a degree in science it is a question it is it is it, 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 it is your mind it is your ability to reason this is what is important so uh, these are a very important understanding um, and uh, this has got very large significance uh, in the progress of the nation. It is not for the progress of merely the progress of science and technology alone, but it is for the entire progress of the country and the world that one needs to be uh, scientifically guided. Uh, one must be, one must have scientific temper. Please remember scientific temper. You must be very, very logical. Your every work, every conduct has to be based on um, reason. So therefore, uh, whatever chaos that we see in the country, the disorder in the society, this is largely because of the fact that most of us, many of us, we do not have that rational mindset. We do not have that scientific temper. And that is leading to this kind of chaos and disorder in the society and in the country and in the world tree. So therefore, it is very important that on the occasion of the National Science Day, we sit back for a while, think for a while, and uh, um, try to understand the beauty of a scientifically um, spirited mind. Not a scientific mind, but a scientifically spirited mind. The spirit of inquiry is very important because it is based on reasoning. So this is, um, this is one thing. The second thing, uh, the second part, my, I, have got a, I got uh, my lectures mentally prepared to uh, segment into three parts. One, two significance I have just mentioned. And uh, the second part is I will try to relate it with um, the theme. This is theme is the future of uh, science, technology, innovation. Uh, it's impact on education, work, and skill. See, the future of the future of science, technology, and uh, innovation is just 
unbelievable. You cannot imagine at what rate the human mind is working now. You just you just to have uh, you just to pause for a while and look at the scientific inventions and discoveries and technology developed over the last one hundred years, last fifty years, last ten years, and you 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 cannot imagine uh, how the human mind works. It is it is mind boggling. The capacity our capacity to think is mind boggling. So that way, science is progressing, technology is moving, innovation is happening, and uh, as I told you, each and every one of you can think and can innovate because when you can think the only thing is you have to think critically you have to look at things critically you have to come up with creative solutions you have to come up with innovative thinking so that is that is how you can change the world that is how you can come up with new knowledge that is how you can come up with new technology that is come that is how the whole nation how the world progresses without science and more so Without the uh, scientific temperament, no nation can progress. On one side you have science, on on the other side you have the scientific mind, the rational mind. Both are required. Both are required. When we gained the uh, independence from the British, the first Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, had rightly believed that the only way forward for the new nation is through science and technology. So that is how. Uh, the entire emphasis of the newborn nation was uh, focused on developing science and technology. We had seen uh, how the IITs have been established soon after independence. We got five, six world-class uh, institute of science and technology in the form of Indian Institute of Technology. That was the first thing that Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru had done. After that, uh, his focus was on uh, you know uh, infrastructure building, electricity generation, big dams. Uh, what not? He believed that these uh, industries were the temples of, um, uh, you know, um, uh, science and technology. So it is through these temples uh, the science would progress. But then one thing was lost sight of the most important part. As I told you, it is not only the science that is important, which is uh, on which uh, the focus was there in the early part of our independence, uh, with the establishment of IITs and industries and infrastructures and whatnot. Um, uh, uh, rightly, it was um, appreciated The science and technology are the driver of the nation, for the economic drivers of the nation. No doubt about it. But what is also equally important for carrying forward the nation is the scientific temper of the human uh, beings, of the citizen. That was not given due emphasis. And that is the reason we have seen uh, you know, persistence of a lot of things in the society, we still have superstitions among uh, highly qualified people, even among scientists, we find uh, certain uh, certain conducts uh, which does not defeat a scientific mind. We believe in something that is absolutely uh, irrational. So we must change our mind as well. Not only equip our mind uh, and uh, with scientific knowledge and skill, but also equip our mind with the right kind of reason-based, logic-based spirit. Then only in combination of well, with this science and scientific mind, the nation can progress. And that is another significance of observing the National Science Day. Only with science and technology, you cannot take the country too far. With the brilliant uh, technology, uh, mind-boggling technology, you know, will also have limitations. But your mind has to be for that, for full use of the science and technology, one has to have rational mind and scientific temperament. And then, uh, and it should not be limited, it is not to be limited only to the scientists, it is to be there in every citizen. So this is the second part of my uh, National High and National Science Day uh, you know, observations. The first part told that in India, we have the tradition um, uh, since thousands of years back, that deep learning is possible without much, uh, you know, support. Only, only support is your mind, your capacity to think deeply. Secondly, that uh, the spirit of inquiry is more important than the technological, scientific discoveries or anything else. It will, it will, it will come by the way. It will come automatically. And uh, for the progress of the nation and the world, we need to combine both science and the scientific mind, the rational mind. That is very important. And for developing a rational mind. One doesn't have to become a scientist.
you, me, and anybody can develop a scientific mind. Now the third part, the final part of my lecture, that is relating, uh, oh no, uh, I have not completed about the theme, the science, technology, innovation, the future. The future is mind-boggling as I see. Now what is happening is this, there are certain major innovations in the history of human being on this earth which are considered turning points in our civilizational growth. One such turning point in the human history was about 10,000, 12,000 years back when some of our forefathers who were you know, roaming around in the wilderness for in search of food, in search of fruits, seeds, uh, and had to fight with uh, wild animals and beasts on a daily basis. There was no security of life uh, and there was no time to look around anything, only to find out food, to fight with animals and save your skin, save your life. That was a wild life. There was no civilization. But even in that period, there was somebody who noticed, some, some people noticed that plants grow from seeds and seeds germinate into new plants. It flowers, it develops seeds and fruits and seeds. And from there, the idea of agriculture began. Idea of agriculture was the first biotechnology. That was the first biotechnology, that was the first technology human being innovated after fire and wheel. Fire and wheel also were two other innovations. How to get fire, how to create fire. And after that, the major turning point in human history, and that was the beginning of civilization, was, uh, was agriculture. And not only agriculture, along with agriculture came uh, the process of mechanization. We can mechanize, we use muscle power to till the field. And therefore, what is happening is this. Uh, what, what happened was this. So as agriculture started, people had gone for settled life. They had enough time to look at the world, look at the universe, and then use their faculty of mind, faculty of thought. And they started thinking, looking, observing, thinking, new knowledge emerged. And that was what is referred to as, that is, that is the beginning of industry also. Agriculture was a kind of industry at that point in time. And if we can, we can say that this was industry 1.0 stage in humanity. That was 10,000, 12,000 years ago with agriculture. Then that was a, that was a major turning point in history, and remember, agriculture was nothing but scientific observation. Um, and then many 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 years later, in the mid mid nineteenth century, this is in historical time. We have seen uh, that how in England uh, it was uh, it was invented uh, that from steam from by boiling water you can get steam, and from steam. You can drive turbines and by using turbines, you can generate electricity. So electricity generation, the invention of electri electricity was the second turning point in the history of human, uh, human civilization. And that really ushered in what we have, what we have seen uh, and call as the industrial revolution. A lot of factories have came, manufacturing started, natural resources have been utilized for goods and services like never before. Earlier, it was only the uh, agriculture sector, which was in, involved in uh, producing, um, uh, you know, goods. Uh, but then now, with uh, electricity coming in, factories came up, and a lot of new scientific innovations were promoted. New inventions came, and many, many things happened. And industrial revolution started. With industrial revolution, business started, trade started, colonialism started, exploitation started, and a whole lot of many things happened, and it changed the whole world. So that was in historical time, that was in 19th century. Then it continued many, many years. Uh, and then in our lifetime, when uh, we were in school, um, I was in school in 1970s, there was the third most significant invention or innovation in science um, done by human beings. That was the innovation of uh, computers. The coming of the computers and the, along with that, the IC information technology had really changed the world like never before. We are still in the middle of, uh, you know, this impact of uh, scientific innovation that had come in the wake of um, computer science, engineering, and information technology. We are still getting the impact of it. Uh, and that marked, you know, 
industry 3.0 industry 2.0 was electricity in industry 1.0 was agriculture now talking about the future of science technology innovation what is knocking at us what is um, what is uh, knocking at our doors are technologies like artificial intelligence mechatronics big data analytics and it's a part of uh, it's a part of artificial intelligence machine learning internet of things these are all mind boggling innovations of science and technology and these are these, are, these have not only really happened um, these have already been placed in use artificial intelligence every time you use a mobile phone you you use artificial intelligence in so many ways so uh, we have to uh, uh, experience the impact of these new technologies of artificial intelligence which mark industry 4.0 young generation have to be the young generation has to ready themselves equip themselves with the techniques with the technology with the knowledge and the skill to cope with these new technologies and a new way of life there are so many opportunities coming in your way you cannot imagine the world is changing very fast the world is changing very fast the world is becoming smaller and smaller with globalization the world is becoming more complex so you have to have an education system which will shape your mind in such a way that you can cope with the change sweeping us like never before again the world is changing so fast that if you are not in a position to cope with the change you are a failure the world has become so small that many people with many cultures many many viewpoints come to join shoulder to shoulder to work so if you do not have a mind to accept others point of view to accept and tolerate and respect others cultures you cannot cope with the diversity the kind of diversity around us if we maybe and if, if if your mind is not ready you cannot you cannot negotiate the complexities of life so therefore apart from coping with the technologies you have to also cope with the different situations of the life which are changing ever changing which are becoming ever complex and which are um, getting more diverse and diverse so we are talking about a new kind of education called the liberal education and um, by which which will liberate your mind in such a way uh, through your education process uh, so that not only you will learn your mind is ready to not only your mind is ready to learn your mind is also ready to unlearn because something gets un obsolete so you have to forget you have to forget it for a while and you have to modify it um, and you have to relearn it so it's a learning process will be a continuous process it will be a lifelong process of learning and for that what is critically important is your ability to develop such a mind which is so scientific which is so based on scientific temper that you learn you unlearn you relearn so that you can cope with the your mind that is is trained to cope with the change your mind is trained to cope with the uh, changing diversity and the changing complexity of life and this is to be a part of our educational process so now all these three fall together we have a tremendous civilizational uh, strength in being an indian our civilization is so ancient and so strong world look at looked at us for our civilizational strength our knowledge system our uh, this is a heritage system is so strong that you cannot abandon it you cannot you cannot just um, um, uh, um, uh, you know uh, struggle of uh, the indian uh, knowledge system um, um, uh, because of the new uh, technologies and new knowledge old knowledge also has its own value and relevance you have to remember but what is more than knowledge and what is more than technology uh, is the mind and the mind has to be signed um, you know based on uh, a rational thought process based on uh, reason and logic and uh, that is what called scientific temperament so uh, and uh, with the new um, changes coming in sweeping us across the world complexity is happening every day uh, everywhere and the diversity is uh, that we see in life today uh, so this is uh, mind boggling earlier you know when we were very young we thought that we will be working only in assam only in india but now um, young people aspiring to go abroad and uh, study and work uh, in places like uh, hong kong places like singapore places like in united states of america in e europe and there in every institute every industry every corporate sector every university you will find not just people from one country one nation one nation and one culture you will find there people from every corner of the world working together teaching learning doing 
So your mind has to be appropriately, uh, you know, trained and um, um, tuned so that you can adjust with this kind of diversity, so that you can really conform to the complexities there and so that you can really cope up with the chains. Otherwise, there is no way out. So this is how this is what is being highlighted again and again in the new national education policy that we have to have liberal education. The earlier BSc, BA become small compartmentalization uh, in pursuit of different subjects is gone now. You have to look at the world holistically in totality. It's a, it's a big reform that we are talking about in the new national education policy. It's a huge, massive, massive uh, reform that we are talking about and this massive change is required now. Now, what is important is that we have to gear up. Both students, teachers, every member of the society, we have to really gear up and try to look at the world, what is happening and what necessitates this kind of change in our education system. What necessitates this kind of change in our attitude, in our mindset, which has been already written and emphasized in our constitution, which is a rare distinction of our Indian, Indian constitution. And it is, which has been also uh, highlighted uh, in our civilization thousands of years ago, that what was possible in India long, long time back. Imagine the, um, you know, the capacity of the human mind to think about and come up with logic about the existence of uh, atoms um, uh, and um, uh, are so tiny. You cannot see it, you cannot visualize it. Now we can see it many, many, many years later with very sophisticated innovations and instrumentation. But during Kannad's time, it was the observation was through the observation of the mind, the thought process. That is the power of the thought. You can see the unseen logically, mathematically. So therefore, uh, all these things are very, very important uh, on this uh, day of National Science Day celebration. I think we have to we have to remember all these issues and all these aspects and take the nation forward. So with this, I conclude my talk. I think I have touched upon uh, all the important aspects that have come to my mind. And let me tell you, my dear students, you are you are you are so great. You are so you have such tremendous capacity uh, that you only have to realize it. And after realization, you have to learn how to harness this tremendous power that we have. And why it is important, let me again try to, before I conclude, let me tell you one thing. You know, at this stage of your life, young people, when you are in your early 20s, teens, you know, you have tremendous, you are biologically endowed with, with certain qualities and capacities. As, as people age, uh, many faculties become stunted, blunted. I cannot, I cannot run at 65, 66 now in my age, the way I used to run when I was 15 year old, when I was 20 year old. I cannot climb a hill in Shillong now, the way I used to climb when I was in school. Every Sunday, every Saturday, Sunday, I still remember I used to climb uh, from, my, uh, from my home in Madan Laban uh, up to the Light Corps Peak, climbing. And it was so fun and adventure looking at the different flora, looking at so many things, exciting things, looking at the town below from Light, Light Copic, and from there we went to Shillong Peak. But now I cannot do this. So, so this is the effect of biology. So similarly, similarly, the way I cannot walk now at 65, I run at lay, I run the way I walked, um, um, uh, you know, at that point in time in my life, uh, where you are now. Uh, you know, similarly, your mind also get blunted. I cannot see the world the way you see the world. Your, your observation is pristine. My observation is through uh, you know, layers and layers of uh, you know, uh, lenses. Uh, and each lens comprises of different kinds of experience that cloud my vision, that cloud my observation, that distort my uh, pure observation that you have. Because you don't have that experience of my life now. 65 years of experience. I look at the things in different ways. I interpret, my brain interprets in different ways immediately the way I see it. So I, I, am, I, am, I am precluded from getting a pure, pristine view of the world. But you are not. You get a pristine view. If you look, that is why I say that don't just confine your observation and study only to the con observation of the great people which are embodied in your textbooks, which are taught through your syllabus, which are taught by your teachers. I don't say that you don't believe in what is there in the textbook. I don't, don't say that. I'm not saying that you don't believe in what your teachers are saying. I don't say that you don't follow your syllabus. I, what I'm saying is this, follow all these, but at the same time, 
follow your own way of looking at the world also follow your own also the, your the way your mind tells us that this is this this can be this also and when you have this kind of views your own personal views unique views because you got a in, unique mind each and every one of us has got a unique mind which is unique this is unique to humanity so your thought process your observation is also unique now try to bring into the classroom discuss debate and finally you will realize through your scientific temperament that and logic that you are wrong and what is being said in the classroom is correct by the take by the teacher by the textbooks but sometimes also you will find that something some of your ideas some of your observations are also in addition to what is there and that is important that is how innovation takes place that is how new knowledge emerges and that is the basis of research research can be done by everybody young and old from an infant to an old so it all depends on how you look at the world it all depends on how you think and you got just like you know uh, you can you can run faster you can climb faster right you can also think deeply more creatively more imaginatively an older man but what we have you please don't dismiss us also for that and uh, we are not to be dismissed like that we also have something you do not have you have unique capacity to think more powerful capacity to think creatively innovatively which we cannot have now at this age but you do not have our experience we have our experience also you cannot write of our experience so if we can combine our experience with your capacity of th th thought it will be an explosive combination let me tell it will be an explosive combination our experience senior people's experience old people's experience with and also knowledge with younger people's capacity to see the world and think rationally scientifically can be a, can be a dangerous combination for the whole world and india can again explode um in knowledge and um and as envisages in the new national education policy with this kind of with this kind of combinations with this kind of attitudes india can become the superpower in in the realm of education also a superpower in the realm of education and please remember knowledge is the ultimate power and that power germinates from each and every one of your mind wish you all the best and thank you so much and thank you so much for this brilliant opportunity to interact with you on this important day thank you dr day thank you dr bhatakur